वेलकम बैक टू द ई शिक्षणा प्रोग्राम ऑफ वी टी यू दिस इज प्रोफेसर उमा राव ब्रिंगिंग यू द लेक्चर सीरीज ऑन ट्रांसमिशन एंड डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन इन द लास्ट सेशन वी सॉ वॉट इज फरांती इफेक्ट एंड हाउ अंडर नो लोड एंड लाइट लोड कंडीशंस द रिसीविंग एंड वोल्टेज can be higher than the sending end voltage as a solution to this we saw that we can add a reactor to the receiving end however this reactor can have a detrimental effect when the system is on no load so we need it on no load but on load we don't need it so we have to switch it off when the system is loaded keep that in mind and then we saw the t model of the medium line and the abcd constants of the medium line in the t model so let's continue with the example so this is the example we considered i have a three phase 200 km line delivering a load of 100 megawatts at point 8 pf at 220 kv with a resistance of 0.1 ohm per kilometer and 0.3 ohms per kilometer reactance and a charging admittance of 3 into 10 to the power of minus 6 mos per kilometer and we have to calculate the various parameters so we saw that a is 1 plus yz by 2 and i had drawn your attention that this j is very important for y okay don't forget otherwise you will get all wrong answers and so we calculate a this is all directly by the formula we had derived 1 plus yz by 2 and again notice that a is a complex number it's not a real number and b is z into 1 plus yz by 4 so again b is also a complex number b is also a complex number C is equal to Y, D is equal to A. We saw this, and then I can calculate the sending end parameters once I know A, B, C, D. So V R is two twenty by root three because I need the phase to neutral voltage. I need the phase to neutral voltage, so I divide it by root three. And again, this three is because I need the phase power. the phase power so this 10 cubed this converts my power to kilowatts so since this is in kilowatts i retain this in kv if you convert this to watts you should convert this to volts that will be equivalent to multiplying numerator by 1000 and denominator also by 1000 so you need not do it be very very careful of the units So I R is three hundred and twenty-eight at an angle of minus thirty-six point eight six. Where did I get this? This because the PF is point eight. I have told you it delivers hundred megawatts at point eight PF. So that thirty-six point eight six is the angle corresponding to a PF of point eight and minus because loads are always lagging. Then simple, V S is A V R plus B I R. I have calculated A. I know V R. I know B. I know I R. Here, V R. Take that as the reference. So the angle is zero degrees, and I R angle is thirty six point eight six minus with respect to V R. So you have to. That's one place where you can make a mistake. Then the rest is all calculations. So you get V S is one forty two point one three, and this angle is with respect to V R. The angle is with respect to V R. Next, I calculate the sending end line voltage by multiplying it by root three to forty six point one seven six kV. We then compute I S. CVR plus DIR. Again, notice 
the complex numbers and the phasor quantities. So I get Is is at an angle of minus 24 degrees again with respect to Vr. It is not Vs because Vr is my reference. Vr is my reference. Next. So what will be? So I have Vr. Okay. Vs is at. So this is at 5 degrees with respect to Vr. And Is is at 24 degrees. This is Is. So this is 24 and this is 5.05. So the angle between Vs and Is is 24 plus 0.50 that is 29.05 degrees. Therefore the sending end power factor is 0.874 lag. Next percentage regulation is Vs minus Vr by Vr. So you have Vs, you have Vr. 11.5. 91%. So, can you see that the regulation is higher? So, higher regulation means it is good or bad? It is bad because it means that there is a lot of difference between the sending end and receiving end voltages. So, regulation is poor. A higher value of regulation implies that the regulation is poor. This is because I have a longer line. So, the drop is more. As the line length increases, the drop is more. Now you can calculate the receiving end no load voltage. You remember we defined regulation another way. It is the difference between the no load voltage at the receiving end minus the voltage on full load divided by full load voltage. Right. So on no load, IR will be equal to 0. IR will be equal to 0. Therefore, VR naught will be Vs by A, 144.73 kV. So, that means on no load, on no load, can you see the receiving end voltage has become higher than the sending end voltage because A is less than 1. Okay. So, the regulation is 13.96%. This is if you use the other formula for regulation. Now sending end power is 3 Vs Is cos phi. Again this 3 because I have to consider the 3 phase power. 3 into Is into Vs into Is into cos phi S. So I get 105.63 megawatts. Receiving end power is 100. Sending end power is 105.63, so efficiency is 94.67%. You see, short lines, our efficiency was very high, 99, 98. Now it's slightly come down, but not so low as 60 or 70. It's around 95%. So as the line length becomes longer, as the line length becomes longer, you can see the regulation becomes poorer and the efficiency also decreases. Okay, that's why if you remember what our discussion for long transmission lines, DC transmission is good because it will give you a better regulation. Now, is there any way I can improve the power factor? So, improvement of the power factor means, I think you would have studied in your basic electrical engineering course. When you improve the power factor, then what happens for the same power you will draw lesser current right so we'll see whether it can be done by considering a problem okay so we'll take a single phase system let's not get it too much into the design of power factor improvement but anyway for completeness you should know what happens in the practical system so a single phase 50 hertz line supplies a load of 3 megawatts at 0.8 PF lag and 50 kilometers long. So resistance of the line is 0.0195 ohms per kilometer and inductance is 0.63 millihenry per kilometer. If the receiving end voltage is 11 kV, determine 
various parameters. Now there is one last part of the question which says calculate the capacitor to be connected at the receiving end if you want to improve the regulation and reduce it by 50 degrees. Remember low regulation means good improved performance while the main receiving end voltage is 11 kV. So I want to maintain the receiving end voltage at 11 kV and I want to improve the regulation to less than 50 percent. So what should you do? So this problem will give you an idea of how power factor can be improved. Instead of going into the theory, let's solve a problem so that you get the idea immediately. Fine. Now it is a 50 kilometer line, very simple. I'll use the short line model. Now again, I want to draw your attention. When it's a long line, longer line, medium line, in the previous problems, couple of problems we saw. The power transmitter was 200 megawatts, 300 megawatts, 100 megawatts, 500. But short lines will be 3, 5, 10. So nobody will lay a long line for tra transmitting 3 megawatts or 5 megawatts. It's a waste. You get it? So as I told you always when you solve the problems, pay attention to the data. It will give you a feel for the field. So now R is 0.0195 into 50 that is 50 kilometers so it is 0.975 ohms and x is l omega into 50 is again the length 9.891 ohms do you see here the reactance is almost 10 times that of resistance the reactance is 10 times that of resistance and ir is 3 into 10 to the power of 6 by 11 into 10 to the power of 3. So this is for megawatt, this is for kilovolt, 340.9 amperes. Since it is single phase, you don't have to divide by root 3, 3, nothing. It's a single phase circuit. And we have seen Vs. Vs is Vr plus Ir R cos phi R plus Ir X sin phi R. We have this formula. I know all the parameters. Ir, Vr, I R, R, cos phi R, I R, X, sin phi R. All the parameters are known. So the sending end voltage is 13.289 kV. So the percentage regulation is 20.81%. Not at all good. Very bad. 20% voltage drops. That too for a small meager. 3 megawatt power transfer which is pretty bad anyway so losses is i squared r no 3 here because again remember it's a single phase and uh, since nothing is mentioned we'll assume that r is the loop resistance and x is the loop in reactance so i get percentage efficiency is 96.36 percent so far so good now, why is this regulation poor or why is there a voltage drop? Because the receiving end draws a lagging current. Okay, the receiving end draws a lagging current. So, I have to counter it with a leading current. I have to counter it with a leading current. So, how do I get a leading current? Capacitor. So, remember this is a physical capacitor, external capacitor you will be adding. It is not the line capacitance. Line capacitance, I, you can, it's a short line, I'm not modeling it. So, to compensate for the lagging current of the load, I connect a capacitor at the receiving end. Just like how we connected a shunt reactor to compensate for the Ferranti effect. So, we will see what happens. So, you see, this is the my load, 3 megawatts at 0.8 PF. Clear. So, I connect a capacitor here. This is an external capacitor. So, what will happen? So, this is my receiving end voltage. This is my load. I am not changing the load. The only thing I am changing is I am putting a capacitor there. So, what happens? Okay. So, I want the regulation to be 50% of the previous case. That is my constraint given. So, Earlier the regulation was 20.81, I want it to be 10.405, clear? 
So what do I want my sending end voltage should be? Vs minus 11 by 11, it should be 12.14 kV. What was it previously? Previously, I got, I got a sending end voltage of 13.289 kV. So out of the 13.289 kV sending end voltage, receiving end voltage is having only 11 kV. So now if I improve the regulation by reducing it, then my sending end voltage will be 12.14 kV. Okay, so I have to find out what is the capacitor to add that. Okay, so now IR, IR, the receiving end current, the power is the same because I have not, the pure capacitor does not consume any power, right? So the power is still 3 megawatts. Only thing is the receiving end power factor will change because the power factor will be a combination of the capacitance and the load, right? So, I, I and it's been specified that the receiving end voltage will be maintained at 11 kV. So, I get IR is equal to, this is power, this is voltage by cos phi R. Clear? Now, I have the relationship Vs minus Vr is equal to IR R cos phi R plus IR x sin phi R. So, Vs we know for a 50% reduction in regulation, it should be 12.14 minus 11 receiving end voltage. So, this is equal to Vs minus Vr. This is equal to IR is 272.73. This is IR. This is IR. This is R cos phi R plus IR sin phi R. So, this becomes 1140 left hand side. So, here cos phi R gets cancelled and sine by cos is tan, tan phi r. So, I can calculate tan phi r from this equation. I get 0.324. Got it? So, my receiving end angle now has changed. So, it is, what is the change? It is given by tan phi r is equal to 0.324. And I have the formula for IR, so I calculate IR using that. Do you see the steps? What did I do here? I had the old regulation. I want to reduce the regulation by 50%. So I calculate for the regulation to be 50%, what is the sending end voltage? So I get one value. And I know receiving end voltage is 11 kV, so I get Vs minus Vr. And I have an expression for Vs minus Vr for the short line model. And IR will be the power by voltage into the new, new cos phi R. This is not the old one, 0.8, not that. So, with this I calculate what is the phi R and what is IR. So, I get phi R is equal to tan inverse 0.324, it is 17.95 and IR will be 286 at an angle of minus 17.95 degrees. So, you see, what did you do? Earlier, it was lagging at 0.8 pf, that is minus 36.36 degrees. So, from minus 36 degrees, what have you achieved? By putting a capacitor, by putting a capacitor, you have improved the angle to minus 17.95 degrees. So, referring to the figure, let us see the figure of the capacitor. So, if you, if you look at the figure, what is the equation here? IR is equal to IC plus IL. IR is IC plus IL. Okay. Or IC is equal to IR minus IL. The load is still 3 megawatts at 0.8 PF lag. I have not changed the load. I have not changed the load. So, this the load current would be the same receiving end current what you calculated without the capacitor. That is 3 megawatts divided by 11 kV by 0.8. So, IC is the new value of receiving end current minus the load current. So, it is J. Do you see here? 
IC is J116.14. Now don't go, don't get misled. This magnitude is lesser, this magnitude is greater. How can no? You're all dealing with phasor. Don't forget the angle. So if you have done correctly, then you should get J because the capacitor should draw a leading current of 90 degrees with respect to the voltage. So I know the value of IC. So what is the voltage at which it is drawing this current? The receiving end voltage which is 11 kV. So I know the voltage across the capacitor. I know the current drawn by the capacitor. So I can find out what is its reactance. Simple. So XC is VR by IC. 94.71 ohms. So the capacitor you are connecting. It's reactance should be equal to 94.71 ohms and the capacitor reactance is 1 by xc into omega so if no frequency is mentioned in your problem you can assume 50 hertz i get 33.62 microfarad so the loss with the capacitor the current is now reduced okay so i squared r is 80.13 and the efficiency now improves to 97.4. So from around 94.5, it's come up to 97.4. So what does our discussion lead to? Let us just see what happens. I have a long line or any line. I don't load it. So when I don't load it, the receiving end voltage may become greater than the sending end, will become greater than the sending end voltage if I model the capacitance. So I put a reactor to bring down the voltage under no load condition or light load condition. And when the system gets loaded, when the line gets loaded, I have to remove this reactor. It has to be switched off, number one. Second case, when the system is heavily loaded, the regulation will be poor because there's a large drop in the transmission line and this drop is because of the lagging current drawn by the load. So to compensate for this, I put a capacitor. So by putting a capacitor, what happens? The receiving end current reduces. The receiving end power factor will change. The losses will reduce and the efficiency will improve. So in long lines, normally you will have both a shunt reactor and a shunt capacitor. You will switch on the reactor under light load and no load conditions, switch it off under loaded conditions and under light load condition, you should not put the capacitor on. Then it will, you know, receiving end voltages can become dangerously high and your equipment may get severely damaged and the capacitor is switched off during loaded sorry during no load condition and switched on during loaded condition so remember l is switched on under no load that is the reactor okay and it is switched off under load and c is switched off on no load and switched on load. If you do the reverse, your equipment will be damaged. So the conclusion of this is a capacitor at the receiving end improves power factor, regulation and efficiency. They are all related. Clear? So I think um, you are clear about uh, the role of the capacitor, the role of the reactor. Now let us move on and see the nominal pi model for medium lines. This is another model, another circuit model. So I have Rx. So in the pi model, the impedance of the line is lumped together and the Admittance is split into two at either half, either side, one half at the sending end and half at the receiving end. I told you this is called as half line charging admittance. 
half because you are taking half of the value, line charging because it is because of the capacitor. Clear? So now you see here the load is connected. This is IR. This is an actual, this is a capacitance of the line. It's not a physical capacitor like how we saw for capacitor improvement for power factor. There I you actually put a capacitor. This is a capacitance of the line. So y by 2, y by 2, ic1, ic1. Now let's draw the phasor diagram step by step. I told you don't memorize the phasor diagram. So I have vr and ir is here, ob, ir is here at an angle of phi r. So it draws a lagging current. Okay. And ic1, the voltage at this node for ic1 is vr. So ic1 will lead vr by 90 degrees because the current in any capacitor leads the voltage across it by 90 degrees. So you see ic1 is here. ic1 leads vr by 90 degrees. Next this il will be ir plus ic1. So I have ir plus ic1 is il that is od. ob is ir db is equal to oc. So il is ir plus ic is IL. Now the drop in this resistor will be in phase with IL. So you see this is IL. So I have ILR in phase with it. ILR in phase with it. And I have ILX in quadrature at 90 degrees. And the sum of all this is VS. The sum of all this is VS. So this is VS. Now you have IC2. IC2 will lead Vs by 90 degrees. So this is Vs. So you see here IC2. It leads Vs by 90 degrees. And Is is, what is Is? Look at this, Il plus IC2. Il is here, IC2 is here. So this is Is. Got it? Very simple. You can draw the phasor diagram by yourself. Now let's calculate the generalized parameters for this model. So you have the nodal equation here, IL is IR plus IC1 and you have VS is IL into this drop, IL into Z. These are the two equations you will be using and IS is IL plus IC2. So simple KCL you are using. Okay, ABCD constants, you see here, I have IC1 is VR into Y by 2. Because the voltage across the receiving side is Vr and y by 2 because I have split the capacitance into 2, y by 2, y by 2 on either side. Il is Ir plus Ic1. So I am substituting for Ic1. Now Vs is Vr plus Zil. See here. Vs is Vr plus Zil. This is Vr plus this drop is Vs. So I have Vr, Z and I have Il, I substitute for this. So I get Vs is equal to Vr, I group the terms of Vr, 1 plus Zy by 2 plus Zir. This is Vs. So you know Vs is equal to A Vr plus Bir. So obviously this term will be A and this term will be B. A is 1 plus yz by 2 and b is equal to z. Right? Now I need the expression for is. So is is v il plus ic2. ic2 is vs into y by 2. See here. ic2 this, this is vs. The voltage here is vs. So ic2 will be vs into y by 2. vs into y by 2. You already have the expression for Vs. Okay. So, Is is Il. Il I have. Ic2 is this. So, by grouping the terms together, you get Is is this. So, this would be C and this would be D. So, C is Y into 1 plus Zy by 4 and D is equal to 1 plus Yz by 2. And see here, A is 1 plus Yz by 2. 
So again you can see that A is equal to D and I leave it to you to check whether AD minus BC is equal to 1. We made a claim now. AD minus BC is equal to 1. Please check it out. So I have the ABCD parameters. Okay. Now we can solve a problem. So the same problem we will solve what we did earlier. For the T model we will solve it using the pi model. And we will see whether there is any difference between the models. So same thing. It is a 200 kilometer line delivering a load of 100 megawatts 0 0.8 pf 220 kV. The resistance is 0 0.1 ohms per kilometer and reactance is 0 0.3 ohms per kilometer and line charging admittance is 3 into 10 to the power of 6 mohs per kilometer. So calculate all the parameters ABCD regulation efficiency losses sending in voltage power factor and so on. So we did it using the T model. Now we will do it using the pi model. Okay. Now I will calculate the same thing using the pi model. So I have R, X, Z, Y. Again Y, J. Don't forget this J. So A is equal to 1 plus Y, Z by 2. B is equal to Z c is y z z y squared by 4 and d is equal to a simple same steps same steps as the solution for the t model now vr is 127 kilo volts per phase ir we had already calculated so vs is a vr plus b i r so a vr again vr is the reference vr is the reference and I R, this is the angle corresponding to 0.8 PF. The angle corresponding to 0.8 PF. Now these steps are only calculations. So I get V S is 142.32 at an angle of 5.07 degrees. Very close to what we got with the T model. There we got 5.05 degrees. Now I get here 5.07 degrees. Hardly any change. So the sending end line voltage will be into root 3 and again IS is CVR plus DIR. So IS happens to be 283.53 at an angle of 24.18 degrees. Again you see not too different from the values you got with the T model. So phi S is 29.25 degrees 0.872. Regulation is 12.06 percent and you got an efficiency of 94.73. So here again into 3 because of 3 phase power. So you see it is not too different. So the answers you get, the values you get with T model and pi model are not significantly different. And as I told you the pi model there is no extra node introduced. So you just have the sending end node and the receiving end node. So the circuit model is similar to the physical system. So pi model is what is commonly used for modeling of transmission lines when you want to analyze the power system say for load flow, state estimation, transient stability and so on. So both T and pi models are approximate. Why? Why are we saying it's approximate? Because the parameters are distributed along the line and I'm lumping it. So I have lumped it in two ways. So the T models as I said introduce an additional load and hence are not preferred and pi models are better. So we can look at some more uh, examples. A 220 kV, 150 MVA, 60 hertz three phase transmission line is 140 kilometers long. So the parameters of the line are 0 0.09 ohms per kilometer, 0 0.88 ohms per kilometer. You see these are all lines where the X is really large. 
y is 4.1 into 10 to the power of minus 6 Siemens per kilometer. Siemens is S, same as O, MOS. The voltage at the receiving end of the transmission line is 210 kV. Using the short line model, determine what is the sending end voltage? If the line is supplying rated voltage and apparent power at 0.85 PF lag. What is it if it is supplying at unity PF? And again if it is supplying at 0.85 PF leading. So what is the regulation for each of these cases? That is 0.85 PF lag for UPF and 0.85 PF lead. And what is the efficiency of the transmission line if it's supplying 0.85 PF lagging? Let's solve simple case. So you see you don't have too many equations. Okay, you don't have too many equations. If you just remember Vs, Is is equal to ABCD, VR, IR, it's enough. And ABCD you have to know how to calculate that. That's why it's called as a generalized model. So, R is equal to the resistance per kilometer into the total distance. I calculate X, I calculate Y. This is the first thing you have to do. Because as I told you, you know, your parameters are mentioned in per kilometer values. So many ohms per kilometer, so many microfarad per kilometer, so many millihenry per kilometer. Now, receiving end current, how do I calculate? So you have here the MVA is given, MVA. So I have IR is the receiving end MVA divided by root 3 VL. Cos phi is not there because directly I have volt ampere. You have to divide by cos phi if you are given in megawatts. But here you are given in MVA. So MVA, three phase MVA is simply root 3 VL IL, no cos phi, okay. So, I get 150 MVA divided by root 3 into 210 kV, I get 412 amperes. Okay. And receiving end single phase current, line to neutral current is 210 by root 3, 121 kV. 121 kV. So, you got the receiving end voltage and current. Sending end voltage at rated MVA 0.8 PF lag. This is the first case. Okay. Okay. Now Vs is we know this. Vr plus Ir into R plus Ir into XL. What happened to C? I am using the short line model. I am using the short line model. So again, it is a phasor equation. So you need a reference. So I have Vr as the reference. IR, if you look at this, this gave you the magnitude of IR 412. So, the angle will depend on the load angle, load PF. So, first case is 0.85 PF lag. So, the angle will be minus 31.8 degrees. This corresponds to what? How did I get this? This is 0.85 lag. That's why the minus plus R plus JXL, R plus JXL. So, I get Vs is equal to 158.6 at an angle of 14.4 degree kV. So, the line to line voltage will be into root 3 that is 275 kV. Just see, sending end is 275 kV, receiving end I am getting 210 kV. Okay. This is 0.8 PF lag. Now the second case you have been asked to do is if it is UPF, what do you do? So what will change in this equation? This angle will change, that's all. So for UPF, this angle will be 0. That angle will be 0. The rest will be the same. The equation is the same. Only thing is the PF angle is 0 degrees because it is unity power factor. So, here I get 137.6 sending end voltage and this is 238. You see it is improved. At 0.8 PF lag for 210 kV at the receiving end, I need 275 kV at sending end. 
whereas for UPF for the same 210 kV at the receiving end I need 238 kV at the sending end so power factor has improved now you see why we put a capacitor at the receiving end because it will improve the power factor the capacitor will improve the power factor now the same thing if it is 0.85 pf lead instead of lagging now why will i get lead loads will not draw leading current i would have put a capacitor and that capacitor would be causing the current to lead i might not have switched it off okay or i might have overcompensated so what will change everything will be the same only thing is this one instead of minus 31.5 it is plus 31.5 why it is 0.85 lead it is 0.85 lead so now you see even better 191 kv what happened receiving end is 210 kv sending end is 191 kv what is this remember Faranti effect right so if my if i draw leading current in the receiving end then the sending end voltage will be lesser beautiful this example very clearly you know illustrates so many concepts that under normal lagging loads your sending end voltage will be higher than receiving end as you improve the power factor the sending end voltage required will be lesser however if you go to a leading current the sending end voltage will become much less than the receiving end voltage clear and this also illustrates why you can put a capacitor because to improve the power factor at the receiving end so now you can calculate the regulation so this you see here regulation is very poor 31.1 percent which is very bad so if you want to improve this regulation you must put a capacitor at the receiving end for that load condition 0.85 pf lag you must put a capacitor to improve the regulation and with upf the regulation has increased and with leading regulation has become negative now you remember when we first defined regulation i told you you can get a negative regulation only with leading power factors you can't get a negative regulation with lagging power factors So efficiency, again you can calculate at 0.85 PF lag. So it is 3, 3 times because I need 3 phase power VR, IR, cos phi R, 0.85. So 127 kilowatts. Now input will be 3 times VS, IS, cos theta S or cos phi S. I got the angle of Vs is 14.4. This is for the cases we solved. We solved for the three cases, right? Vs for all the three cases. So it is leading Vr by 14.4. And the current is lagging Vr by 31.8. So the total angle is 14.4 minus of minus 31.8. So I get the input power is 135.7 kilowatts. So, the percentage efficiency is 93.6 percent for what 0.8 pf lag. Next, same way you can calculate for UPF and for leading power factor of 0.85 you can calculate what would be the efficiency. Next, let us take one more example. I have a three phase 60 hertz 345 kV transmission line with the following properties Z Y is given the full load is 700 megawatts at 95 percent of the rated voltage and a power factor of 0.99 leading that means almost UPF but slightly leading not too much. In the previous example, it was 0.8 something leading. So, the angle was high here. It is 0.99 is close to UPF. Now, again, we will determine the same things ABCD parameters. The phase shift between the sending and receiving end voltages and the percentage voltage regulation. So, any problem, these are the only things we are interested in. What is the current? What is the loss? What is the efficiency? What is the regulation? Okay. 
So you go around, beat around the bush, you will come back to the same thing again and again. So I can use either a pi model or a t model. I have used a pi model here. So you are given the impedance per kilometer. It's a 200 kilometer line. So now the moment you see this line length, you should know that you have to account for the capacitance of the line. So you cannot use the short line model. Clear? So I get Z is equal to R plus JX and Y is J840 micro Siemens. Always notice that your admittance will be in micro ohms. Okay. Next I have ABCD parameters. We know this. It is a simple substitution of Y and Z. You can do it and you get this. You only have to calculate three parameters because A is equal to D. So if only A, B, C you have to calculate this is there. This is there. And out of this in either T model or Pi model one of them will be either equal to Z or Y. So in this case B is equal to Z. So actually you will be computing only two values. Only two values you need to compute. The rest is all already available. So I get the ABCD matrix. This is called as the ABCD matrix. It is also called as the transmission line parameters. And some people do call it as the chain parameter. Okay. So at full load, the line to line voltage is 95% is what is specified. So it is a 345 kV line. So 95% of that is 327.8 kilo volts line to line. So line to neutral you divide by root 3. So at full load the specified receiving end voltage is 189.2 kV. So if I use the this voltage as the reference, okay. I will use this voltage as the reference. So you know that the load power is 3 Vr Ir cos phi. Theta is the power factor angle. It is leading. Leading. So I get minus 8.1 degrees. Okay. And the receiving end current phasor Ir is P by 3 V R L in cos theta at an angle of minus theta. So I get 8.1 degrees. So you see here this theta is this is the impedance angle. Theta is the impedance angle. So I get 8.1 degrees leading current. So I R is 1.25 at an angle of plus 8.1 de degrees. Vs is AVR plus BIR. I calculate Vs. I calculate Vs. So the phase shift along the line is minus 26.1 degrees. Minus 26.1 degrees because of the drop. Regulation, you know the sending end voltage, the receiving end voltage, you get 5.6%. If you do no load voltage minus full load voltage, you will get 8.75%. Okay, the two different ways of calculating regulation. So you see when the load is thrown off, the receiving end voltage will go up to 205.76. So let us end this session here. So we have seen the pi and t models of the transmission line and how to solve for various parameters. So we will take up the next topic in the next session.